the beginning of the good news of Jesus, the anointed, the Son of God. Just as it was written in Isaiah the prophet, Look, I'm sending my messenger ahead of you who will pave your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his paths direct. And it was so. John, baptizing in the wilderness and proclaiming the baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And the whole Judean countryside and all the Jerusalemites were coming out to John and were baptized by him in the Jordan publicly, admitting their sins. Now John was clothed in camel's hair. He had a leather band around his waist and he ate locusts and wild honey. And he was saying, The one coming after me is more powerful than I. I'm not worthy to stoop down and untie the strap of his sandal. I baptize you with water. He will baptize you with Holy Spirit. And it was so. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee, and he was baptized by John in the Jordan. And as he was coming up out of the waters, he saw the heavens ripped open and the Spirit like a dove coming down on him. And there was a voice from the heavens you are my son, the beloved. With you I am so pleased. The Gospel of our Lord. I've shared with you a section of the text that seems logical to me. The lectionary for Advent cuts it off so that Jesus doesn't show up before his birth. Yet the full text comes up again in a few weeks when we celebrate the baptism of our Lord, so it's useful to hear it all. In the time of Jesus, people of faith thought of God's word as a creating, creative reality, rather than simply referring to reality. Remember Genesis 1, And God said, and it was so. So in this talk, I want to focus on the impact of the story. What did the words do to those who heard it? The opening sentence lays out the theme for the whole story, but it also does something. It's the first opportunity for the storyteller and the audience to bond, and so it's designed to draw them in. In Greek, it contains a series of oo oo sounds, arche, tu, evangelio, Jesu Christo, huiu, theu. And these oo sounds stand out from the rest of the text and woo the audience into the story world. This odd sound repetition sets the story time apart from normal time. Then Mark puts the prophet Isaiah on the stage. While he mentions Isaiah's writing, you actually get to become the prophet announcing the promise. What's more, you, like the prophet, speak God's word. You announce the one who will come, a voice in the wilderness. And those divinely inspired words produce what they announce. The Greek text echoes the Greek version of the Old Testament, the Septuagint. God spoke and it was so, agenito. God's announcement is spoken through the prophet, and then we're told, and it was so, agenito. John appears, baptizing in the wilderness and proclaiming. The impact sought is to impress on the people the power of the word to create what it promises. I reinforce that with that gesture in the wilderness proclaiming that echoes first in the prophecy and then in John's appearance. This is followed by an ingathering gesture that places the audience in the role of the gathering penitents. They become characters in the story, those from Jerusalem and those from Judea. Then, before John gets to speak, you as the storyteller begin to morph out of being the one telling the story and start becoming John, tracing his clothes on your body, reaching for the locusts and the wild honey. And by the time John speaks direct directly, the audience understands that you stand in his place. Again, the messenger prophet, this time John, speaks of the one who is to come. The Advent text stops here, leaving us waiting. 
But the biblical text goes on to reinforce the earlier dynamic we've discussed. God's envoy speaks, John, and again the Greek phrase, again it to, and it was so. In those days, Jesus comes as though the word spoken creates his presence. Jesus then undergoes what others have, and so he gets the same baptismal gesture as we heard earlier. And then, as you're coming up, you shift into being Jesus, seeing and hearing what Jesus hears and sees. The voice from heaven echoes the first verses we began with those wooing words so that the circle is closed. By now we know that when God speaks, it is so. So Jesus is the Son of God because God says this. Only Jesus sees what happens. Well, Jesus and your hearers who are brought in to hear and see what he says in an insider view. One more way the audience is pulled in. So let's review. There's a summary of what's to come where the storyteller woos people in. Then Isaiah speaks of one to come, and it was so. John shows up. John speaks of another yet to come, and it is so. Jesus arrives. And God's word from heaven fortifies the testimony and closes down the circle. The word has the power to enter into reality and transform it. Trust this as God places this word now in your mouth to share. Thank you.